investment properties and termites in Queensland on the Sunshine Coast. As an investor, what should you be doing about termites? Well, I've come down here to the beautiful shores of Mooloolaba to talk about this, and it's so windy, it's a perfect day for sailing, so I may need to relocate to somewhere not as windy, but let's see how we go. So, the last couple of weeks, we've had three properties impacted by termites. One was a property we were selling, and the buyer did a building and pest, and they found termites in a rear shed. Contract was terminated. Two others um, were properties that we, um, we manage uh, for, our, for our investor clients. Um, one of them um, was a routine inspection, and the bedroom was no longer being used, and I walked in and was doing the inspection, and I saw some soft wood and a bit of a mark, and I pushed, and there was a hole um, in there. That whole room was infected by termites. Last year, we had something similar where I was doing a routine inspection. There was this little tiny mark on the windowsill uh, of the dining room. So I looked at it and pushed my finger on it, pushed through, that had termites. That property had a major termite issue and the tenant had to be vacated because the property was inhabitable and the whole dining room and lounge room had to be ripped out and all rebuilt again and then new tenants put in. Um, obviously, the owners were devastated because of the huge cost involved to have that done. But sadly, the tenant was as well. She'd been there for many, many years and loved the home. And we had to actually relocate her elsewhere and she no longer lives there. So that was really sad. The one from last week, um, the termite um, inspectors have now been out. They've now treated the termites. The termites and I are now killed. And that owner is traveling back up from um, interstate um, in the next coming weeks to have a look at that damage and to see what needs to be done um, to get it rectified, etc. But termites will cost you tens of thousands of dollars if they get into your investment property. So what should you be doing as an investor? Let's go through a few simple things. At the very minimum, as an investor, you should be investing in an annual termite inspection. So a qualified pest inspector annually can go to your property and check for termites annually. The cost of that is probably gonna be around $350. But you also consider whilst they're there doing a termite inspection, maybe you could get a pest spray. This is not a termite spray. A pest spray will deal with spiders, cockroaches, silverfish, and ants. Good pest um, agencies can do that with a 12 month guarantee as well. So um, have a look at my blog and you'll see some pricing around that. They can do it for around $500 an annum. It's warranted for 12 months and that will be that spray for all those pests. Plus they'll do a termite inspection at the same time. That's the very bare minimum that you should do as an investor. But what you've got to consider is if termites get in, 12 months is a very long time to wait um, for your next inspection to see if termites have come in and caused any damage. So what else can you do? Well, as property managers, we generally go to a property to do a routine inspection around every 12 weeks. Now, we're not pest inspectors. We're there to check the condition of the property and how the tenants are looking after the property. We do look for anything obvious that might be termites, and if we see anything obviously will erase um, the alarm bells um, and jump on that immediately. And that's where I have discovered termite issues in the past. Um, but ask your property manager, when they do routine inspections, do they look for termite issues um, if they're visible? The biggest challenge with termites is they get in where we can't see. They get behind the walls, into the wood, so we can't see them. The only times as property managers we notice something is if we see a mud track somewhere on the outside of the property, or if we see wood damage inside the property and they're already in there. So the best thing you can do is install a termite barrier. Now a termite barrier is where um, a pest inspection company will put um, a reticulation system around the entire perimeter of the property. That can be very expensive to install, but once it's in there, it'll last between five to eight years, and then in five years time, they can then do a top up where they just come along and open these caps and re-inject the chemicals into the reticulation system. Now, when you do these, they will be expensive to have installed, um, but they will last five to eight years, and you do have to have an annual inspection to keep the warranty on them maintained. Now, if you've already got one, 
that's been put in years ago and it's a reticulation system but it's now out of date it won't cost as much to have it installed again because they've just got to undo the cappings and reinstall the chemical barrier liquid into the system but not all houses can have a reticulation system because of how they're built. Some houses need to have um, drilling done, and that's where they may need to drill directly into concrete, and they'll drill holes into concrete along a particular area very close together. They may drill holes into wood, along the house into wood, very close together, or they may only have the ability to put the chemical into the actual soil itself. So depending on your actual house is depending on what they'll be able to do. The reticulation system is the best way because if you can do it all the way around, it means that it's much cheaper to do up to top up in the future when that expires in five to eight years time. Now, these can cost anywhere from $1,500 to $4,000. It's a big investment, I know, but you've got to think of it a little bit like landlord insurance, building insurance, and that type of thing. Uh, termite barrier system is an insurance policy against you getting termites and we see termite damage constantly so it's something you need to take seriously as, a, as an investor to protect your investment because if you get termites it's going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars to get rectified your tenants may need to vacate due to, date, due to the property being dangerous as well now what other alternatives do you have other than a termite barrier where well, you can do termite baiting? The thing with termite baiting is it can cost about the same as a barrier and that's where they put baits around the outside of the home and in the gardens to draw the termites away from your home and into the baiting systems instead. The challenge with this is it's not as effective as a barrier, it costs about the same and they have to come and inspect and rebait the little holes about every six months. So it's only in extreme circumstances where a pest inspector would recommend a barrier, a termite baiting system if a barrier just is not possible. Have a barrier, congratulations. But your next thing you need to ask yourself is, is your barrier up to date? Um, was it updated between five to eight years ago? When was, the, are you having annual termite inspections done? If you're not, Get in touch with us and we can organize to have a pest inspector go out and do an inspection um, and check for termites and, and produce a report for you. The reports they do are relatively detailed and that will be a report that you can then have filed away. And then what they'll do is they'll remind us annually that it was 12 months ago and they need to go again. And it's something you need to just build in to your investment process to do annually for these checks. But there's some other things that can cause termites to come into a residence, and that is how properties are built or extended. It's really common for um, carpenters to build onto a property without termite protection in mind. And what they'll do is they'll build uh, a wooden deck straight onto the ground or a wooden entrance straight onto the ground. I'm kind of a bit embarrassed to say, but we own an investment property in Budrum that has exactly that. There's a deck built onto the ground at the back, there's, a, there's an entrance built onto the, onto the ground at the front, but we have a termite barrier system in place to protect us from potential issues there. Um, but that's a big no-no. Sometimes people will do a post like the one behind me and they'll build them straight into the ground and termites can just get straight into those posts from the ground and go in the posts and go into your home. So they're supposed to actually have a 75 mil um, metal bracket and from the ground to the post and then the post starts and that will stop termites from getting into your house. Moisture can attract termites. So if you've got a drainage problem um, around your property and um, the gardens are above the weep holes and there's a lot of moisture around your property, you're inviting termites into your home. So you need to make sure that the gardens aren't built up past the weep holes. You've got good drainage around your property as well so the property can stay dry and not attract those termites. But tenants too could also cause termite issues by leaving items lent against the house or lent against the poles of the homes or lent against the stumps under the homes. If there's things under the homes like piles of wood or rubbish that is like a magnet for termites to basically create colonies and then work their way into the house. So tenants have a responsibility as well to keep the place uh, clean.
clean and tidy and have nothing leaning up against the property or stored under the house that can potentially attract termites. I can almost guarantee you that there's gonna be termites in every backyard here on the Sunshine Coast, in the gardens, in stumps, etc. But tenants have an obligation that if they see mud tracks on the side of a property, or if they see um, a bedroom where a windowsill um, has become soft or looks slightly damaged, tenants have a responsibility to report this type of issues immediately to their landlord or to their property manager so this sort of stuff can get investigated. So just to summarize, as a landlord, at the very least, you need to have an annual termite inspection with a report, at the very least. But better, you should have a termite barrier installed that's inspected annually and then updated between five to eight years to keep it in check. If you've got any more questions, um, contact me below, shoot me an email, subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay up to date with um, any other information about investment properties on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland.